Okay, I am going to show you how to build the circuit that you're going to use today. It's actually relatively simple as far as circuits go. It's a series combination of a 10 kilo ohm resistor, which is this one right here, brown, black, orange, if you can see from the stripes there. And I mount the resistor as we've been taught to just put one in there so that the two leads are not connected. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the thermistors. You're going to be doing this with both thermistors, but you can do it one at a time. And I'm going to take one of these long green wires. It's the longest one I could find. And I'm going to twist the end of the thermistor onto the wire so that you can uh, have a good connection between the two of them. Okay, so I'm twisting it like that. Ideally, I'd solder it, oh, it just came out, so that it wouldn't come out and wouldn't pop out. So there's better ways to connect wires, but we're doing something quick and dirty here for our, to build our sensor. So this is what I'm going to do right now. You can see I twisted it together on both, both of the leads, so I have a good connection there. And I'm going to wire this such that it is in series with the resistor. So I'm going to put one end in there. That's in the, one of the rows with the resistor. There we go. And the other end I'm going to put in another hole. Okay, so now I have a series combination of my thermistor, or if you like, my temperature controlled resistor and my other resistor. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire these to the power bus of the of the battery that I'm using. So I'll, I'll attach this one. Let's see. I'll go with the darker wire for the negative side, and I'll go with a lighter wire for the positive side, the red wire for the positive side. So this one's purple, but it looks darker, so it's more consistent with the black wire that we normally use for this side. So I have this wire going in here. Then I'm going to wire it to the negative bus for the battery. Call this the bus, if you remember. Let's see, I hope that's in there. So good, let me try it again. There we go. Okay, I got that darker wire in there. So you can see, as long as it's in somewhere in this blue leftmost column, I should be okay. And the other side of the resistor right here, I'm going to wire my positive wire that goes to the positive side of the battery. And I'll put it in the column that has the red label next to it. Okay, so this is my circuit. And you can see it's a series circuit. And I just need to put in my battery. Then my circuit is running and my battery will be, I'll use a nine volt battery, this one. And of course I need to use the battery clip. So I'll hook it on. I'll make sure that these two wires don't touch each other when the battery is hooked up. So it's probably better to hook up the battery after it's hooked up into the circuit. But I'll wire one wire here. Here's the red one. You can put it anywhere in this column. And I'll put the black one here. And voila, my circuit is actually running. Things are running. Of course, it's not all that interesting right now because I'm not measuring anything from it. But there's now a voltage drop across that resistor and across the thermistor. And I could measure it with my meter if I wanted to, which... I will want to do, it should be recording a voltage associated with the thermistor being at room temperature. Okay, so I haven't done that yet. Sorry about that. Got that little excitement in the video. So if you're asleep, now you're awake. Uh, so what I'll do, if, if I put this in here like this, you should see a positive voltage on my... Here we go, five volts. Now, if I touch the thermistor, you'll see that that voltage is gonna change. It's going down. Okay, when, when the thermistor gets warmer, the voltage seems to be going down. So that's what we're going to be exploring in today's lab. We're gonna be putting the thermistor, this one, in different temperature water and measuring the voltage across it using my voltmeter. And I'll actually put the voltmeter on the circuit down here so that it's not interfering with the thermistor's operation 
So I'll have to, I'll pop an extra wire in there so that I can do that. So that my voltmeter is effectively out of the way of the whole thing, but it's still electrically connected. So this end I connected to the thermistor, but just on this side of the wire. And the other end, I'll pop another wire into the same row here. This is something you can do. It's good to know this. So this wire happens to be a yellow wire. It doesn't have to be yellow, it's whatever color. Uh, black would have been better, but I don't have a long black wire. All right, and then pop that on there like that. Now my uh, voltage that is being recorded, let's see, should be the voltage across the thermistor, which is now nine volts. What's going on? There we go, five volts. Okay. All right, so what I'll be doing next then is I can, I can keep that there. I'll put the thermistor in a little bag like this so that I can then immerse it in cold water or hot water or whatever temperature water. Whoops, that wire came off. When the wire came off, notice the wire came off, now the voltage went up to nine volts. Now it's just measuring the battery voltage. But when the thermistor is physically connected to the circuit, which generally, like I said, it's better to do this with a soldering iron because these twisted, these wires aren't really designed to be twisted together, but I'm just trying to do this quick and easy. There are little quick snap connectors and things I can do to make the connection better and more reliable but I don't have them right now, so we're doing what we can do. We're NASA engineers, wiring things together, using duct tape and chewing gum. That's kind of the metaphor that's often used when you're just trying to wire things together like this. Okay, so there's my thermistor again, and now my battery voltage is uh, dropped low there. Oh. Hmm. Doesn't like to be on too long, it complains and turns itself off, so, to preserve its own battery life. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a bag that I will then immerse in whatever liquid I'm trying to measure the temperature of, kind of like what we did in last week's lab. All right, so I'll be doing that in the next few minutes. It looks like the connection broke again. I gotta make sure I have a good connection between these wires or else the voltage is gonna jump up to nine volts. So that, uh, yeah. That's what happened. You see it now, it went back to 4.88. So if it ever jumps up to nine volts, you probably have a connection problem with your thermistor. And I'll try to fix that when I'm actually doing it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, I have two meters and I know most of you don't, but I'm gonna use it because it'll make it easier for you to see what's going on. I'll use one of my meters just purely as a thermometer. And the other one I will use as a voltmeter. Many of you will have to change between them. You'll have to go thermometer and then change it to a voltmeter to get the voltage and then go back to the thermometer to measure the temperature. Um, I apologize that you'll have to do that. I can do it all in one step, but it'll make it easier for you to see it if I do it that way. So I'm setting my t uh, temperature sensor to the proper setting, degrees Fahrenheit, and I use that white wire that comes with this meter to do that. So I'll be immersing this in water of different temperatures, and I'll be immersing at the same time my thermistor in the water of the different temperatures, and that'll give me my two data points that I'll be looking for at each temperature, both the temperature and the voltage drop across, actually it's not across the thermistor I'm supposed to be doing it, it's across the resistor itself, I apologize. So I'm going to just show you how I'll rewire that, it's a very simple change. I'm going to make the black one go, I'm just going to put one lead of the voltage sensor there and the other lead of the voltage sensor here. And you can see now I get the 4.69 volts. The voltage across this resistor I'm interested, in, not across the thermistor. That's what I meant to do. That's what the uh, the, the uh, lab statement says. And now if the thermistor happens to disconnect, I think it'll go to uh, see what see what happens if the thermistor disconnects. It goes to zero volts rather than nine volts. Okay. So if you got zero volts reading on this, then you know you have a uh, disconnected thermistor. When the thermistor is connected, this voltage will vary with the temperature that the thermistor is reading. As the temperature gets higher, the voltage across this 10 kilo ohm resistor will get higher. As you can see here, it's now 5.29 volts. 
when I'm touching it, when I let go of it, if it stays connected, it'll drop down to four point something volts. Okay, the next video is going to actually show you the actual measurements. I hope you're able to do the wiring now, now that you've had the corrections uh, that I've given you, so that you're measuring the voltage across the 10 kilo ohm resistor, not across the thermistor. You got to see me make a mistake. Sometimes that can be informative. All right, next video will show you the actual temperature measurements.